So the shads industry is one that's complicated and convoluted. Honestly, who's got the patience to read through this thing? So in this video, I'm gonna save you the trouble of sifting through all of this and share with you the six most commonly missed conditions in the Shads Award. Now, before we start, I wanna stress the importance of payroll compliance. This video is intended for general guidance and you should always consult a qualified payroll professional or accountant who can provide you with the tailored advice for your situation. So in the last 12 months, we've seen some pretty hefty breaches in the Shads industry. In most cases, they were found to have failed to pay a range of minimum entitlements, such as allowances for shifts like sleepovers, or they didn't factor in loading where they should have. Fair Work has publicly stated that its focus is all about compliance now, meaning you need to be certain that you're paying your employees correctly. To help you, we've also put together a document that you can download for free that translates the conditions free of jargon and includes a payroll processing checklist. We've left the link down below. All right, let's get into it. Number one. Regular casual employees have the right to request conversion to full-time or part-time employment. A casual employee covered by the Shads Award that has been working a regular pattern of hours for the past 12 months has the right to request that they're converted to full-time or part-time employment. Employees can only refuse this if there are reasonable grounds to do this and that they're reasonably foreseeable. And all decisions need to be made within 21 days of the request being received. So some examples of reasonable grounds include if there are significant changes to their hours of work with their new employment terms, if the position may not exist in the next 12 months, if the position may reduce their number of hours within the next 12 months, or if there are significant changes in working days and times within the next 12 months that don't suit your employee's availability. Number two, varying rest breaks between different types of SHADS award shifts. Depending on what type of shift your support worker works, there are different requirements on minimum number of hours of rest between the end of their shift and the next shift. So here are some conditions. Employees should have a rest of no less than 10 consecutive hours between shifts. A rest of no less than eight consecutive hours between shifts if their following shift is a sleepover shift. A rest of no less than eight consecutive hours from finishing their sleepover shift to the next shift a minimum of 10 hours break between broken shifts on consecutive days. For all employees except casuals, a minimum of 10 consecutive hours off is required after an employee works an overtime shift without loss of pay. And if the employee works without 10 consecutive hours off, they need to be paid at 200% until they finish their shift. And then you'll need 10 consecutive hours off duty without loss of pay. Number three, Penalty rates apply outside ordinary span of hours. So if your employee works outside of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday, you will need to pay penalty rates. For afternoon shifts that end between 8 p.m. and midnight on weeknights, you will need to pay 112.5% of their regular rates. For night shifts that end after midnight or start before 6 a.m. on a weeknight, you will need to pay 115%. And for public holiday shifts, you'll need to pay 150%. Number four, high duties require high pay rates for home care employees. So home care employees must be paid at a higher pay rate. If they work two hours or less, they need to be paid for the time worked. If they work for more than two hours, they must be paid a full day or shift. If the employee has worked five consecutive days or more at a higher classification, they must be paid at the minimum rate based on the classification they worked. Number five, Different minimum number of hours per shift apply for different types of casual employees. A minimum number of hours is applicable for casual employees. For social and community services employees, except when working as a disability services worker, it's three hours. For home care employees, it's just one hour. And for all other employees, it's two hours. Lastly, number six, roster change rules apply. Employee rosters under the SHADS award require that you need to provide seven days notice. If a client cancels or changes home care services, you must give notice to the employee by 5 p.m. the day before if no payment is to be made. If there's no notice given, then the employee will be entitled to receiving payments for the hours rostered on that day. But the other alternative is that the employer can direct the employee to make up the canceled time in the next fortnight in other areas of the business. So there you have it. The six conditions that are most commonly missed in the Shads Award. Hopefully you found that useful. Now, if you still feel like you're still stuck with the award, you could also consider adopting time and attendance software to put your payroll on autopilot. 
You can capture start and end of shift times using an iPad or the phone app. The data is synchronized with your payroll system, making payroll processing a complete walk in the park. If you're still feeling unsure about your compliance with the Shad's Award, feel free to get in touch with us at PayCat to learn more. I'll see you next time.